time has expired, but let me give you something to chew on. Sometimes the appetizer is so good, it's filling. And the main course is coming, but you don't even have enough room to receive it. You just take a little chew and let me give you something to take home in your doggy bag. Is that all right? Because the Holy Spirit is doing something right now. Somebody say, keep moving, Lord. Move. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're doing this been doing this series on the power of positive thinking so you need to get your positive thinking caps on I know what may be happening right now doesn't feel good but it's going to work out for your good somebody speak this into the atmosphere remain positive just tell it remain remain positive remain after after every better yet around every storm cloud somebody say around every storm cloud look at your friend and say around every storm cloud there's a there's a silver lining <laughs> in the plane the other day and it was dark on the land but the closer we got to the clouds I seen something lining the storm cloud it was a silver lining tell somebody behind every storm cloud there's a silver lining tell them you know what that silver is tell them the silver is the sun Tell them the sun will shine again. something for your journey and you don't have enough time to catch me in numbers chapter 10 it says leaving out from off of Mount Sinai children of Israel verse 11 numbers 10 and 11 and it came to pass on the 20th day in the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of testimony and the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. The commandment of the Lord had come to Moses and he began to set to order the journey ahead. What was happening? God is moving. What was happening? God is moving. What was happening? God is moving. And not only is God moving, the glory cloud that has been with them at the tabernacle has led them into the wilderness and now on to Paran. Not only is God moving, but he's moving. In a new direction. What happened? What happened? And moving them. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and so where do they are? Somebody say where? <laughs> what, what direction? What direction? See you got to order your thinking. Because what happens sister Gabrielle. Is when we don't. When we're not familiar with the way. We don't want to go that way. We start fearing the new. <laughs> we start.
start hesitating to go into it. Oh, we start barking. But I said, God is moving. And moving how? Just because it's not familiar don't mean you should be afraid. You got to think. You got to think. You got to think. You got to think. Get your positive thinking caps on and you got to think deeply into this from the tabernacle to the wilderness I don't want to go there anybody ever been in that place where you know God is nudging you into something that may not be as convenient I, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was talking to the citadel. I thought I was talking to the same church whose church got sold in the pandemic. While we are online, we had to stay online longer than we should have. Because in the pandemic, our church got sold for demolition. <laughs> And I had to get back down on my knees. After I got my, the lump out my throat. You know it don't feel good. After I had to close my eyes to everything that don't look good. For we walk by and not by. Tell your neighbor you might can't see your way through this. You got to faith your way through this. I said God is moving. I said God is moving. I said God is moving. In a. The inconveniences. From the tabernacle to the wilderness. The wilderness of Sinai. Now we move from one wilderness to another. So it's not over. If you look there in verse 12 of Numbers chapter 10, it makes it plain. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai. And the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. From one struggle to another. From one pain to another. From one part-time job, need a full-time, but God said, I'm moving you to another part-time. Well, preacher, I thought you were telling me to put my positive thinking cap on. What's positive about going from one wilderness to another wilderness? I'm glad you asked. It's the fact that you're still moving. You may not be getting paid exactly what you deserve. But it's the fact that some people are, on, are unemployed. And you're still getting paid. I, in other words, he could have left me in Sinai. Oh God, I'm so glad that God didn't drop me off. And even though I may not be all the way out yet, I'm that much closer to my breakthrough. I'm that much closer to the promised land. I am that much closer. Tap somebody and say, you're still moving, aren't you? That neighbor ain't working no more. That one ain't work. They tired. They tired of you. Find somebody that's going to work with you. Glory to God. Tell them I got faith coming to you. Glory to God. And tell them you're still moving, aren't you? Matter of fact, get up, get up, 
get your bag, get your Bible. You might got to get away from the unfamiliar and I need you to move. I need you to relocate. And the whole way to your new destination in this sanctuary, I need you to say, I'm still moving. I need you to walk and talk at the same time. I'm still moving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to another destination. Might have to go through over here. But I thank God. I'm still moving. I thank God that I'm not stuck. Tell your new neighbor. Tell him welcome. But don't get stuck. to the next level hallelujah I may not be on the president's list but I'm still in class I'm still admitted y'all ain't saying nothing glory to God I got the rest of my life to make the president's list glory to God but as long as I'm still in the way I still got a fighting chance in other words he could have killed them in Sinai but he let them live and said go on to parade I told you grace they didn't deserve to survive Sinai okay. alright alright can I get about three people to just thank God for just being alive I'm just glad I'm alive. I'm going to stop complaining about how I feel. I'm going to stop complaining about what it looks like. I'm going to stop complaining about what has been when people are walking up into the grocery store and killing innocent people and shooting innocent babies. I come out to thank God for still being alive in this. Somebody tag your neighbor and say, I'm still here. Hold on. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm not going to take my time. I'm just going to give you something to take home in your doggy bag. It be high. Good God Almighty. All types of diseases. Hallelujah. And you survived it. I was in Seattle, Washington last Sunday. Glory to God. And I told them what I've been telling you. And they almost lost their mind. Glory to God. The pastor had just got back to his church after being sick with breakthrough COVID. In other words, he was fully vaccinated. Fully boosted. And the devil came back around and tried to kill him again. 
and him and his wife and they hadn't been in church in weeks but I looked at him and I said millions didn't make <laughs> I got the rest of my life to climb that mountain but at least I'm still in the land of the living and Moses said come on and he began to order them and to set things in order begin to set forth the vision for the journey pull together the tribes all of the descendants every camp the Bible says in verse 28 of chapter 10 that the children of Israel journeyed according to their army and Moses said unto Habab the son of Raguel the Midianite Moses' father-in-law we are journeying to the place which the Lord said why do you think Moses had to tell them where they were going again because somebody began to complain about what was going on they already knew that Moses was following the Lord because the Bible said that the cloud and for those of you all who are not familiar with this story God sent a glory cloud wherever the glory cloud moved that's where they went the ark went the cloud went before them the ark went out the priests and the people the children the cats the tribes followed the glory cloud Ask your friend, are you still following God's glory? And some of you may answer to the affirmative, but there's more to the story. You're mad that you're still hinged to the glory. I haven't exactly left the church, but there's stuff about it I don't agree with. I know, I know. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you credit for attendance. But the last time I checked, you don't pass the class just by showing up. There were two reports on your report card. Thank you, teacher. I forgot three. Attendance, participation, and then there was your grade report. Moses said, We're going where God said go. If you got a problem, Israel, it's not with me. Your beef is with the Lord. God said, verse 29, I will give it to you. All you got to do is get there. <laughs> I will give it to you if you just go. Come thou with us, tell your neighbor with us, Moses said positive thinking. Positive. There were some people who didn't want to move. Stubborn, stuck, and stupid. Huh? You can't provide for yourself. When the glory leaves, the food is going to leave.
Huh? When the glory leaves, the healing is going to leave. When the glory leaves, the protection is going to leave. You can stay here and raw dog all you want to. But I need to be covered. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I have to talk it to you in my version because I can only be me. God is telling them through Moses and that's the problem. God ain't talking to the people. (laughs) I'm sorry. I know the people can't say amen. Maybe the ministers can say amen because the people got a problem that God don't cut us out the process. Because, you know, when we got to correct them, they don't like us no more. So, you know, the people got a problem that God just wouldn't forget Moses. The people tried to forget Moses, but God said, you ain't got the power. I sent Moses to you. What you have is the promise. You don't have the power to get there. I don't expect y'all to say amen. So I'm just trying to get some of this sweat off my face. The people had a problem that Moses had more power than they did. But the only reason for Moses' power was not for his own agenda. Moses was fine where God found him. He only had power for the people. You working against the one that has the power to bring you to the promise. You heard the promise. You ain't seen it yet. So Moses clarifies, we will do you good. Positive thinking, positive thinking. For the Lord has spoken good. You see this? Concerning Israel. This is what Moses was trying to do. Condition their minds. And, And if it shall be, verse 32, if you go with us, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same we will do unto you. Verse 34, and the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day. And when they went out of the camp, and it came to pass that when the ark was set forward, and Moses said, rise up, let your enemies be scattered. This is the protection I was talking about. There is no need, no reason for you to fear the fight. There is not an enemy that you have that God can't subdue. There's not a hater that you can have that God can't help. They don't need you to fight them. They just need God to help them. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, Lord, rise up up so my enemies enemies can be scattered. In other words, as long as God is over me, the devil can't come near me. I'm just, I'm just giving you something to take home in your doggy bag today. Just something to eat later tonight because you, you got full early. And verse 11, and the people, and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord 
And this part is very specific. Eric, not only did it displease him, but he heard it. In other words, God hears more than your hallelujah. He hears everything. <laughs> I think that is just so significant. If I have any budding theologians, I, maybe you could do a better job with it than I can. But the fact that the text specifically makes it clear to us that God was not ignorant to everything they were saying. We oftentimes focus on what Israel was doing. But it was just enough of what they were saying to make God mad. And you know we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to have to give an account for everything we said. We think that only our actions are going to be written in the Lamb's book of life. But your lies, your deception, uh -huh, the time you curse God, uh -huh, and the time you talked against God's church. Huh? And not just that, when you also murmured against God's Moses. I inconvenienced Moses. So you will have a way out. And you want to curse him? Moses and I, let me say how I feel like, Moses and me were good. We were straight. I, he did what he did. But after 40 years, if I didn't kill him on the way to isolation, God said, I didn't need 40 years to forgive Moses. I forgave Moses when he asked me to. And I inconvenienced him. And Moses said no. Moses reminded me of everything that he couldn't do. And I had to come into an argument with Moses that I understand your disability, but I have all ability. Moses and I came into agreement to save your wild asses. But the Bible says it now. And now you want to work against the leader you can see. And don't even know that the leader you can't see don't want to have no parts in it. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. Tell you but watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Oh my God. Y'all said that too polite. You said that like you don't know your neighbor has a problem with their mouth. Some of y'all neighbors intimidating. That's how you know they got a bad mouth. Because they won't even open it to encourage you. Tell your neighbor, talk back to me in this place. Just watch your mouth. Tell them, but that ain't for me. Keep your mouth off God. Look past that other neighbor and say, keep your mouth off God. And tell them, and that includes Moses too. You ain't going to never get God in your corner when you steady trying to tear down the leader. This ain't this sermon ain't about this, but since I'm here, since the text has led me here. And so the children of Israel complained so. 
And there's a powerful prayer that Moses prayed after that. But I don't want to focus on that. Go to Deuteronomy. Let me give you the dessert and we're gone. Just put it in your bag. You ain't got no room for it. Just, you know how you go to Cheesecake Factory. Right? So you got room for dessert. You know, if you really want a real good tip, they'll give you the dessert for free and you pay for it back in your tip. Since y'all been a good crowd today, I'm going to give you this for free, huh? In Deuteronomy chapter 8, the help in my sermon today is focused here. What you just heard was context. In chapter 8, the Lord began to speak to them. Again, the leader began to speak to them again. One thing about Israel, they can never say that they were ignored. They can never say that they were ignored. They had specific impartation. And here comes another one, shall we? All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may die. That you may live. So obedience is unto death. No, obedience is unto life. So every time I deny myself and do what God said do, I'm living. That's powerful, isn't it? Do the commandments, which I command you to do, so that you may. Why? Because where are we? Wilderness. <laughs> we are in the wilderness. We are going to the promise. But we're not there yet. And so in the wilderness now, I thought maybe you had this already, but let me give it to you. Amen. It don't look like life. It don't feel like life. The, the only thing you would really be able to relate to being in the wilderness would be homelessness. And there's nothing encouraging about being homeless. But can you imagine being in a desert with wild animals and then wild friends? Y'all said <laughs> everything wild. <laughs> can you imagine being in the wilderness where there's not any ready-made meals there's no pots there's no pans there's no kitchens and there's no coves you are in the wild and what Moses was trying to help them to understand is that a sermon I preached oh my god Stephen so many many years ago God's people don't die in the wilderness I just wanted to see who was going to grab. I know you may be homeless right now, but you're not going to die like that. I know you may be jobless. I know you may be friendless. Oh my God. I, I know it may be something going on in your body and you're scared to find out what it is. Go on and find out because I promise you, you're not going to die like that. Some of us know, know, should know better because you didn't been out there. You've been in the wilderness. You've been friendless. You've been family-less. You've been car-less. You've been house, apartment, trailer-less. And God still survived you. Somebody ought to help me with this. God's people don't die. In the wilderness. Somebody ought to 
I jump up and declare I was never going to die. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. On your way down, high five your neighbor and say, he brought me out. Brought me out, brought me off drugs, brought drugs off me. Some of you was selling them, some of you was doing them. Either he brought you off of them or he brought them off you. But he did it, didn't he? <laughs> Come on, brought you out of poverty. Either brought you out of it or it out of you. Glory to God, I praise him today. And the only reason why you'll know what I've been through is if I tell you. Because I look better than what I've been through. I don't look anything like the wilderness that I came out of. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When I was, when I was running my campaign, People would come up to the polls and meet me and they would say, oh, wow, I, I didn't know you were black. I thought drum rates sound European. I said, no, they're struggling. But I don't look like the struggle because he brought me out of it. Somebody ought to take a giant step and say, he brought me out. And I'm so glad about it. Take one more step, because he might be taking you on to the promise. I said he brought me. I said he brought. I said he brought. Hey. He brought me out, and I'm so glad about it. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. So that you may live. So that you may live. So that you may live. If you stay where you are, you're going to die there. I got to move you to bless you. Y'all, it's two, it's like 15 sermons in these one in this one verse. I got to move you to protect you. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not only that, hallelujah. I got to move you to multiply you. In other words, where you are, it's not enough space. Somebody thinking about it in just one way. No, God can multiply you in more ways than just you procreating. Hallelujah. God may give you more cars than you have garages for you. I got to move you. God may give you more furniture than you have rooms for. I got to move you. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. You're going to go from a, from a single oven to a double oven. I got to move you. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. If your washing machine is in the closet, God said I got to put it in a room by itself. I got to move Y'all ain't talking back. It's not enough room in that bedroom for a California king. I got to move you. Y'all better talk back to me in here. You need a bathroom with three sinks. I got to move you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hit your neighbor and say, move and be multiplied. Move and be multiplied. Move and be multiplied. Move and be multiplied. You got to 
learn how to think positive. You got to learn how to think positive. You know, I, I'm, so, I'm so crazy. God is so awesome. You will have just bought a table. And you will love the table that you just bought. And then, next thing you know, your eyes will be attracted to more tables. Well, God, I'm grateful for the table you already gave. Why are you peeling my eye for another one? That's God's way of saying, in enough room where you're at. I want you to have a breakfast table and a dining table. I want you to have a living room and a game room. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I want you to have a front porch and a back porch and a side porch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to shove your neighbor and say, move and be multiplied. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Hey. Hey. We. We was. Truth be told, we was kind of. Well, y'all wasn't, but I was. Because you didn't know nothing about I was mad about this move. I wanted to stay where I was. Huh? I knew the way there. I knew the people who lived around there. I knew how that building worked. I knew how the heat worked. I knew how the air worked. I knew how to make it work. But God said, move and be multiplied. God Almighty. Gotta change the address. God Almighty. Gotta get used to another location. God Almighty. Gotta tell everybody where we are. Now we gotta, we gotta publicize it. At the old location, the organ was right here, and the keyboard was right here, and the drums was right here. But I was happy over there, and God said, that's why I'm going to move you. As long as you stay grateful, I got more in store. As long as you'll work what you got, I'll give you some more to work with. If you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler. Tell somebody, change your mind. Tell them God's going to move you to multiply you. If you give God praise for the struggle you already have. Yes, I did. Think about it. As smart as I am, I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay in a place where we didn't have no air condition. Right about this time, over at 1800, you might not have heard the organ because the fans were so loud. I want to stay there because I had plans. You got the plan, but God got the master plan. Oh, Jesus. I, I know, I know, I know. It's familiar. It's familiar. I knew what I knew how to, I knew which outlet to plug the fan up in. I knew which outlet to plug the lights up in. We knew which doors to open and which doors to close. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But God said move and be multiplied. And go in. In other words... Israel, where you are right now, you're renting that space. 
You don't own what's temporary. And you don't lease what you possess. I have a promise for you. And the promise is for your possession. God was trying to convince Israel, I'm going to make owners out of you. But I don't want you to own the trap house. I want you to own a mansion. Let's go. Tell you, but let's go in. Let's go in. And you shall remember, and this is my closure. You shall remember. Read it with me. And you shall remember all the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. You didn't lead yourself. Who led you? Even though it could have took you three days. And when he realized that you weren't going to follow his plan, he could have dropped you off. But even in your rebellion, wait. He still was willing to lead you. God Almighty. I, I, wasn't, going, I wasn't even thinking about that. But that's a crazy praise right there. That even when I had it my way, God said, I won't leave you alone. keep going and you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God I'm not going to deal with that led you <laughs> these how many years ago years. we were talking about this these 40 years in the wilderness but let's define what happened here let's, let's bring some clarity about why we had to go this way. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Because you, my sir, thought you had it going on. You thought that you was more powerful than the power. You then thought that you had more anointing than the minister. And you thought that you could take care of yourselves. So I had to humble you. I, I knew I wasn't going to get no amens on that. Because that's not what this society wants. Nobody wants to be humble anymore. I don't know who's following because everybody's an influencer. I don't know who's being mentee because everybody is a life coach now. Huh? You get two days out of, the, out of your sophomore year and now you want to be a life coach. I don't understand. Baby, you, you, you got two new muscles and now you a trainer. I don't get it. I don't get it. Two new muscles. And now you meal prepping and selling them. Baby, them, them meals don't taste that good. You need to be sewing and not selling. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Talking about it's healthy. I didn't taste better meals than this. Huh? Huh? You know how to play one CCM song and one shouting beat and now you want to charge the church $500 a Sunday. You can't even play a hymn or a sermonic selection. I'm talking to the musicians. And who selects the sermon? The, the, the selection? Show not us. If you can't play a sermonic selection, you can't carry no service. Because when the sermonic selection come, they don't even take enough to come over here and tell us what they're about to sing. They just open their mouth and start singing it. And you got to follow. And if you're not great enough to follow, then you're not great yet. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness more me by more new mercies I see all I had need God had had provided 
faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is great is great is great 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 is thy to receive think about it think about it think think I know I have parents in here and then I know I have godparents in here and then I know I have surrogate parents in here I know I got aunt parents in here and uncle parents in here and I may have some big brother parents in here but you raise somebody and if you need some practice get a plan Talking about God want me to multiply. Hold on, hold, hold on. Hold on, homie. <laughs> hold on, homie. If you can't take care of a plant, you can't take care of your own seed. Okay, all right, all right. your mind on the one thing you didn't want God to do. <laughs> you don't like to think about that. <laughs> but it's there. Huh? It's something you pray for and didn't get. Okay. It's somebody you prayed for. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You at least have a praise now. You didn't get them and you didn't get the headache. You ought to at least have a praise now. You didn't get them and you didn't get the disease that came with them. You ought to at least have a praise now. Tell your friends, say he did it to humble us. And I know my big head self. I know my arrogant self. I know, I know my know-it-all self. Ain't never been that way. But I want to act like I know that way. Huh? I know my, my complaining, high-minded, Lazy, can't cook. I'm complaining about phone bill, but looking at houses. I can't even take care of myself, self. I know I needed to be humble. Uh, ain't but two people talking, but that's all right. You're the most blessed people in here. Huh? You know you always got a reaction. Always got a response. I told you, keep your mouth. <laughs> That's all right. Keep running it and you're going to stay in the wilderness. Glory to God. But I'm like Caleb and Joshua. I'm tired of these lions and tigers and bears. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Glory to God. I'm tired of powder milk. Y'all 
I ain't saying nothing to me. I'm tired of sugar cane. What's better than raw sugar is honey. And Caleb and Joshua told them, don't y'all want to go to the land that's flowing with milk and honey. And then my theologian Amora said, pastor, if the land was flowing with milk and honey, then that means there was flowers everywhere for the bees to buzz on for them to then produce all that honey. honey and flowers y'all ain't saying nothing to me you can stay over here with these shrubs if you want to glory to God you can stay over here dating them scrubs if you want to glory to God but I want to go y'all ain't talking back to me and then my minister said last Sunday when I was out she messed around and said that you got to sit with the fact that it was flowing. I heard you, girl. Didn't that girl preach yesterday? I said, I can't even get, that's why I had to come down here because I can't even get my own pulpit back. I said, mm. I was brushing my teeth. I said, oh, you better go ahead on and preach. She learned how to preach like that. She said it was flowing. How, which means there was a lot of it. Ah, and you know me, I like right much. Yay, hey, God. I said, oh, yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. She preached, so I had to give her a seed today. I said, preach, girl. Hmm. But it took all that humility. Had to humble us. How, you know how people act like they don't need to be humble. had to humble us humble me to prosper me he reduced me <laughs> to make me wealthy it's true tell you that, but this is a true story he, pro he reduced me to provide for me. Huh? And y'all see me working through it. And to prove you. Let me help you with this. Anything that is certified and bona fide has to be proven. A lot of people are bragging about success that hasn't been tested yet. A lot of people are doing YouTube marriage channels about relationships that haven't been tested yet. It is too new for you to be telling somebody how to do what you're doing. It ain't been tested yet. <laughs> you got the prototype. But will it stand the test? And there is no test. Greater than time. Huh? Huh? You're rushing to ministries that are too new. It hasn't been tested yet. I was talking to one of my colleagues the other day and I was asking about uh, one of our other colleagues over in Winston-Salem and they told me, man, you know he gone. I said, gone? He dead? No, he alive. <laughs> but you know he not in Winston no more. What? Who got the church? Oh, you know the church gone too. What? <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah, doc. What do you mean, yeah, doc? Everybody had left their church to go to his church. What do you mean? 
three years ago, that was the most progressive church in Winston-Salem. Had to keep getting building after building after building because the buildings that they had were too small. What do you mean? Everything that's new isn't true. I know, I know you're, I know you're saved now. Oh, you thought I was going to keep talking about buildings? <laughs> Let's talk about your brand new faith. Amen. You learned two scriptures and now you're ready to preach. Whoa. Hold on, Miss Millie. <laughs> hold, hold the horses. Just, just sit with it. Huh? That baby faith and that brand new praise. It's exciting to be saved the first time. The first for real time. The first time you brought yourself. And we are excited to see you coming. Because normally you wouldn't be here if your grandma didn't bring you. And even when your grandma did bring you, you didn't praise God. So we are excited that you're coming on your own. How many of you got yourself here other than the help of the Lord today? Look at this. This is exciting. All these young people. When have you ever seen this many young people get themselves to church? Huh? It's crazy. You you had all your clothes ready for the club. But you was 18 and still having to get help with clothes for the church. That's crazy. You had your tie for the white party. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You had your Stacey Adams ready for the day party. But you invite the same you to church. Hey man, I don't know man. You know I ain't really got no church clothes. So by the time you get your own church clothes. And some of y'all ain't got church clothes yet. Stuff be jumping and flopping and pulling out. And I, hold on baby. That's why we thank God for the handkerchiefs what you call them. The prayer cloths. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> she didn't wear the, the day party clothes to the church party. <laughs> Jesus. But it's alright. We thank God you're coming. <laughs> but it's still new. That's why we cover you up. And we don't say nothing. One time the musicians came to me and they said, can we have a meeting with you? I said, this is true. y'all so silly. This is a true story. This was, this was back in the G, when we was having church in GCB. Were you with us back then in GCB? Okay. Musicians said, can we have a meeting with you? So we went off and ducked off. And they said, um, I had an all-male musician. It'd be great to have some females over there. There, there was all males. <laughs> she said that because Taylor's dad is, a, is a, a consummate bass player. And Taylor told me this week that she bought a bass. Her daddy was trying to gift her one of his ten basses. And she said, keep your basses, I'm going to buy my own. So I don't know, maybe Taylor played the bass. We, we could use some diversity. So, so, so I said, well, what's on your mind? I ain't got no money. What's on your mind? <laughs> they said, Pastor, will you please meet with the women of our church. I said, what? Bad attitude? No, it ain't the attitude. You're not welcome. They don't t talk to you. No, they talking. <laughs> 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 
in all seriousness, this was not a joke. And I, I'm, I got to get my serious face because I don't want you to think I'm joking. They said the women, the clothes, the dresses, the skirts, the tops, they're too high. They're too revealing. And where we were at that time, the pulpit was the lower sanctum. And it was an auditorium. And the auditorium rose up like a movie theater. So, and they went into detail. When they shout, the clothes are either too tight or too little. That it's hard for us to not be distracted when we come to church because we're having to fight what we're looking at. True story. That really happened. And I really did meet with the church. Because I've never had struggling young men who said, we don't want to have to struggle like this always. And they were serious. And I, I, I tried to think that they were joking. And I said, no, we're serious. And it's true. It's true. You remember those days? It's true. But why? Why, why did I let it go on? I knew. I seen it. I'm a man too. Because it was so new. Because it was so new. You can't tell somebody in order to come back here when they just got back, got here, change your whole wardrobe. Huh? You catch the fist first. Then you clean the fish. You don't clean the fish and then catch the fish. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, when you was new, you got away with stuff that I didn't get away with. The stuff that you was doing, I had a meeting about. But you was new. And in other, in order, in order, in other words, God had to humble you first. Because if you offend the new baby, they're not coming back. But now we can't stay in this place forever. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So when you was a newborn, you got to act up. You got to kick. You got to scream. You got to fuss. You, you peed on people's faces. You crap on people's couches and nobody bothered you. Huh? People cleaned it up and said, oh, ain't that cute. Huh? But if you keep going into the tubes and you refuse to prove them, you're going to have some problems on your hands. And so what you need to understand, Israel, is that I brought you into this place to humble you and prove you. Are you going to leave me? Huh? Are you going to leave me? People, look, look, I know you got the ring. And I know you got the honeymoon. But the marriage still need to be proven. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I telling the truth? I know you got the leadership position. But you still got to be tested. I know you got a good paying job. But hold on. Don't get too much too soon. Huh? You still got to be tested. Everything about you and everything that's coming to you is going to test you. And when the Lord said to them, I got to prove you. He was saying to them, I got to test you. That's why when they got to the promise, they seen giants. That's why. It's crazy because people will literally leave too early. Huh? Because they did not like the 
test. Wouldn't even take it. Didn't even like it. Didn't even like it. I know you got a car. But you still got to pass the test to drive. Huh? I know you got the degree. But you can't be, you can't practice law. Until you get proven. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Huh? Just because you went to law school don't mean that you are a lawyer. You are a lawyer when you pass the bar. And you don't pass the bar in school. <laughs> they give you your degree and then they say, and now let us know when you become a lawyer. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you're like, hold on. Are y'all going to help me pass the test? You can take that on your own. Huh? Some of you all are offended when God tried to prove you. And Israel started dropping off like flies. Because it was either because of their pride or it was either because they could not pass the test. But God said to them, I will lead you into the promise through the wilderness to humble you, to prove to you, and to know what was in your heart. Whether or not you will keep my commandments. The promise has a purpose. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. The word of God for the people of God. The word of God for the people of God. Keep your positive mind. Refuse all negativity. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, kind God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for imparting into us. As a matter of fact, the word of God teaches us that we shall not live by bread alone. But it says every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God, that you have spoken to us. Perhaps we're on a journey. Perhaps we're being tested. Perhaps what is new wants to grow. Now we got to be proven. Perhaps our heart is yet to be revealed. Lord, do what you want to do on this journey. Can you pray that today? Have your way on this journey. Take me through whatever I got to get through to bring me into my promise. Wherever you're going to multiply me, that's where I want to be. God, I thank you right now. Lord, wherever flow is, that's where I want to go. Wherever my plenty is, whatever I got to do to get there, I'm willing to do it. Satan, I rebuke the complainer in me. I, 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 com I, I, I rebuke the murmuring in me. I rebuke the, dis the discord in me. I rebuke the conflict in me. I told you last Sunday, church, keep your emotions in check. Did you check them this week? Lord, help me. Help me. Help me in every area of my life. So that when you come to test me, when you come to move me, when you come to shift me, when you come to prove me, when you come to reveal my heart, I'll be on the winning side Satan I release you I rebuke you I 
without you. Without you. Apart from my ways, my mind, my body, my soul, it belongs to the Lord. Somebody say, I belong to God. Say it again, I belong to God. I belong to God. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to get this complaining out of me. I'm going to get this lazy spirit out of me. And I'm going to get this pride out of me. I know you was on the front row. Can you say it in the middle? Can you say it in the back? I want to be healed. I want to be made whole. I want deliverance. If you're not saved. If you're not saved. Lift both your hands and say, Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Say it with me. I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Jesus, forgive me. I have sinned. I have sinned. I have sinned. I confess them to you right now. Come on, tell the Lord all about it. Tell the Lord all about it. The word says if you will confess your sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Lord, take my heart. Take my mind. Take my spirit. You can have my body. Save me. Save me. Deliver me. Jesus, I believe. I believe that you died. I believe that you died just for me. And after three days, I believe that you, you were resurrected from that grave. And that you came back to life with the keys to hell in your hand. Jesus, I believe you're Lord. I believe you're God. And I believe that you reign. You're Lord of all. Somebody crown him. You're Lord of all. Take me back. Take me back. Take my mind. Take my soul. I give it to you. Somebody give your life to him. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give you all of me. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to the promise. I want to welcome you back to salvation. God, somebody in here needs to be filled in the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. It's yours for the asking. Ask him this whole week. Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I can't discern. All my decisions are off. My judgments and my perspectives, they lead me down the wrong path. You need the Holy Spirit. You don't have no stay in you. You keep getting tricked to go back to your old ways. You need the Holy Spirit. You don't have a fight in you. Everything the devil wants to do, he gets it done in you. You need power. You need the Holy Spirit. Ask them all this week. Lord, for anybody in here that is going to ask, seek, and knock, I pray that you will send your spirit. That you'll send your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray and now we worship. Can you worship the Lord right there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and say something to the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, from the time we came out of praise and worship, God been shifting. 
Anybody feel a shift in you? If you feel a shift in you, then you ought to release a shifted thank you. If you feel it, if you feel it, just release a shifted praise. There's a move, and it's got your name on it. I never, I'll never go back. Lord, if you help me to stay moving. Da, 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 da.